Hello, I'm Bruce Yaney, and today in Homemade Science, I thought I'd share some information about the upcoming International Physicist Tournament. The date for the tournament is July 1st through the 4th. This is the 13th annual event that each year has been hosted by a different country. However, due to the COVID pandemic, this year is once again being held, but it is as a virtual competition. This year's host is Warsaw University. Teams of six bachelor or master's degree physics students from colleges or universities from around the world battle it out to present their findings on 17 challenging problems that are chosen each year in the field of physics. Teams have eight months to research, experiment, and prepare their findings for presenting during the tournament. The schedule for the tournament can be found on the IPT website. This year's tournament actually consists of two events that are quite separate from each other. IPT will also have a conference style part where everyone can present their solutions of the problems, no matter if they're qualified for the international tournament stage or not. This three hour slot is being held Saturday, July 3rd. You can register for the physics fights or the IPT conference on their website. Now let's take a look at a few of this year's problems. First up, nuclear mousetraps. An array of mousetraps and ping pong balls are often used as a model for nuclear chain reactions. Construct a model for the macroscopic dynamics of such a system and identify all the relevant parameters for an excitation probability. Distant thunder. What parameters of thunder can one reconstruct from a photograph of lightning? How does the answer change if a silent video recording is used instead? Conversely, what parameters of lightning can one reconstruct from an audio recording of thunder. So that one has a little extra gym. Yeah, that twin, twin strike. Heavy parachute. Is it possible to build a magnetic parachute to protect a load from impact when landing on a non-magnetic metallic surface? How should it be built in order to minimize the impact damage? Next up, a solar retraction motor. A solar retraction motor works by using the thermal shrinkage and relaxation of polyethylene or other materials. Now this piece in particular I have a personal interest in. I've spent hours and hours on variations of the design and using different materials for it and I'm still looking for ways to improve its efficiency. I'm really anxious to hear the results of their research. I'm hoping that one day these become a bit more useful. The spinning washer. This looks like a fun investigation. A washer on a vertical steel rod starts spinning instead of simply sliding down the pole. Study the motion of the washer, the sliding spinning transition, and determine its terminal velocity. Branching light. When a laser beam passes through a thin film, such as a soap bubble, random filaments of light are created by an effect known as branch flow. How do we explain this phenomenon? Can one design a medium to produce specific branching patterns? Is it extended to other wave phenomena such as water waves or sound waves? Ice clock. This looks like a good experiment for young scientists to try at home. An ice cube inside a mixture of vegetable oil and baby oil will remain between the two liquids because of its density. As the ice cube melts and releases trapped bubbles, it goes up and down periodically in an intriguing way. Can this experiment be turned into a clock 
What would be the longevity and its precision? Optimize the set of parameters such as shape, temperature, composition, length, scales, etc. to obtain the maximal clock precision. Quantum Droplet Analogy Small droplets on the surface of a vibrating liquid can be an analogy of quantum-like behavior with the so-called pilot wave theory. Construct an experiment to test as many quantum analogies as possible and discuss the theoretical and experimental limitations of this analogy. I first learned about the International Physicist Tournament two years ago when two of my pieces were used as part of their problems. One of the pieces is called the String Shooter, a piece I had designed years ago but had a misunderstanding about its actual behavior. In reviewing the solutions, I was really impressed with the amount of effort that went into the research and experimentation that went well beyond what I put into it. I found it to be quite a learning experience, so I'm certainly looking forward to this year's tournament and conference. If you're interested in previous year's problems and solutions, IPT does have a database listed on their website. 